Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, CEO of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation, Everyday Economics, a production of America's Talking Network. You can subscribe to all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, make a tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We're recording today's episode on Friday, August 23rd, and joining me as always, my friend, my colleague, the esteemed. Dr. Orfe Devangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, um, want to talk about the week ahead. We're like, you know, like I just said, we're recording this on Friday. There's been some significant uh, economic news. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell spoke this morning in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And I think he said what a lot of us had been thinking, and even the, the casual observer had been thinking, that rate cuts were bound to happen. And, and <clears throat> I mean, you have to start with one. You can't have cuts without the first cut. It sounds like we're going to get the first cut uh, in in the next opportunity for the Fed to make that cut, which is when. Yeah, look, the, uh, the Fed chair came, comes out and he's basically telling us everything we kind of already knew. Uh, the labor market has softened significantly. Inflation is declining. The pressure on uh that the labor market was probably going to uh was likely imposing on consumer prices or at least that some people thought would uh cause significant uh elevated inflationary pressures has eased uh the unemployment rates uh nearly a point higher than it was a year ago uh, look all of those factors have basically basically mean that the fed's focus has shifted from inflation to the labor market, uh, the Fed chair came out explicitly saying that, uh, that and I'll, I'll quote, we do not seek or welcome further cooling in labor market conditions. Uh, and so that just tells us that the Fed is ready to, uh, to cut interest rates. Powell came out dovish, um, more so than I think some people might have expected. Uh, but the markets kind of expected three rate cuts starting in September. With uh, uh, the the policy rate and maybe ending settling around three two five to three point five percent in June of next year, so so he basically reiterated what uh, what we already knew and what we've been talking about on this podcast for a couple of weeks, maybe three four weeks now. Uh, what we've been writing about, you know, simply the fact that with inflation coming down to target. The Fed funds rate at the current level was too restrictive, mm -hmm. uh, and that basically, right, that basically the labor market uh, cooling meant the focus had shifted, uh, and that's exactly what Powell said. I think what was exciting about the, pre the about the speech today was what I wrote about on my LinkedIn page: the Fed chair taking a victory lap in Jackson Hole, essentially right. saying, "Look, there were some people saying we needed a recession." to get inflation under control. We would need a period, a lengthy period of high unemployment to get inflation under control. And the Fed, base, the Fed chair basically saying, no, we didn't need that as long as inflation expectations remained anchored uh, and the public had confidence that the central bank would be acting to keep, to bring inflation down to the 2% target, uh, then we'd be fine. The fact that the Fed responded in the way it did by raising the Fed funds rate, the fact that uh, the Fed remained committed, regardless of the commentary uh, that was out there. Uh, basically, Powell came out swinging and said, look, you know, we basically, with our actions, reinforced the confidence that the public, the public's trust in the mm -hmm. central bank. Uh, I think that's important uh, going into uh, this year's presidential election when you hear presidential candidates talking about uh, Fed in independence, uh, I think it's important to, to be out there saying that the Fed, despite having made the early policy error with the transitory conversation in the beginning, was able to kind of restore confidence uh, in its ability to bring inflation uh, down and under control. Yeah. And, yeah. And there's no, I mean, I don't think, you know, in hindsight, like, you know, I mean, history reveals itself over time. Right. And uh, I mean, there were just, there were some decisions made uh, early on. In fact, frankly, non-decisions made early on uh, that that hurt. 
uh, the Fed engaged and the Fed is, you know, has done what it's done. It's held the line. I mean, we have not had a rate cut or oh, excuse me. We have not had a rate change now in eight months. Is it eight months now? It's the end of August. I think yeah, it's eight it was, months. Right. So, so there's been yeah. no change this year. I mean, in, in the calendar year 2024 for certain. And I don't believe that there's been a, a change since um, at some point in the fourth quarter of 2023. So let me ask you this. Um, uh, what do you think the first cut will be? I, I do want to spend some time with the other stuff that's on the economic calendar. Uh, I don't want to wait for my own you know, personal self-interest. I don't want to wait until Monday to read your column in the center square to know. I want a little bit of a tease right here. Uh, but what's the rate cut going to be in your estimation? And then let's get on to some of the other data that's coming out next week. And let's try to tie that back into Fed, uh, Fed Chair Powell's statement today. Yeah, look, I, 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 you know, I, despite all the commentary I'm hearing, uh, household cons consumption remains pretty strong. Uh, despite the revisions in the employment numbers, employment growth has been pretty strong, driven in part, in, in, for the most part, uh, with, by an increase in labor force participation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, productivity growth has remained pretty, pretty solid. In fact, has been rising. And so I don't think that we're going to get uh, a big rate cut. I think 25 basis points is probably more likely than 50. Uh, and, and, all, and I think that the Fed will gradually uh, move down. Yeah. Right? And, and the, hint, the hint is in the speech, right? Uh, I, I think at least that I'm reading this correctly. It's, you know, the extent of the, 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 uh, the movement is going to depend on the incoming economic data. Mm -hmm. What does the incoming economic data tells us right now? Tells us inflation's under control. Sure. It tells us uh, employment growth. Well, employment growth may have slowed, but the share of uh, prime age, working age Americans working is at the highest level it's been in 20 years. And without further increase in labor supply, why would? employment continue to increase, right? There has to be a limit uh, to this thing. Employment right. growth is expected to slow, mm -hmm. right? Uh, layoffs remain low. And so that's what, the, that's, what it's, that's what the data tells us. Okay. And so unless we start to see, by the way, without a shock, a massive economic shock coming from somewhere, I don't know where right now, uh, I don't see permanent... Lay, I don't see layoffs increasing. Right. Uh, so, and then you, and then you look at the latest data that we got uh, in the past couple of weeks. Uh, you, you know, last week we had retail sales stronger than expected. At the same time, you have housing starts weaker. Uh, but then you get new home sales data we got today. So <laughs> new home sales increasing way more than expected. Right. And uh, and even though builders are kind of gloomy about the situ about uh, about their prospects, it's pretty clear that uh, potential home buyers waiting on the sidelines are ready to act at the first hint of a improvement in housing affordability. Uh, and by the way, the new home sales number reflect July numbers well mm -hmm. before the big drop in mortgage rates that we got in August. Right. And so. You know, with the big drop in mortgage rates that we saw in August, I really expect more activity uh, uh, coming from home buyers. And so you have a consumer that's still doing really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that tells me the Fed will probably ease slowly as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, so some commentators talking about the big declines that we've seen in the past, where right. basically the Fed was fine was behind and had to cut rapidly because the the economy was heading to a recession. Yeah, we're heading up to the 10 minute mark. And so we're, you know, we, we really do try to keep these condensed. So we're, you know, we'll tease to this and they're going to have to read about our, our listeners are going to have to read about this in your column at the center square. You've got uh, PCE, core PCE and the uh, GDP revision coming out. Um, I look forward to seeing all those uh, in, in your yeah. column um, on Monday. 
uh, at thecentersquare.com. We're going to call it to an end right here. For Fade Yvonne Gee, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other high-quality podcasts at americastalking.com.